you think Democrats should be more concerned about Medicaid's fiscal challenge to the states? Well, listen, I think there's plenty of room for Republicans and Democrats to work together on trying to address a healthcare system writ large that costs twice as much per capita than any other industrialized country getting middling results. Uh, the fact of the matter is there has been nothing in any of the Republican plans that have been offered that truly attacks the issue of cost. Of the course, that's, of the that's issue, not true. The issue of price, <laughs> right? The issue of price being passed down to consumers by an increasingly for-profit healthcare system, whether it be drug companies, device companies, hospital companies, um, hospice companies. Uh, and within the Medicaid system, you are paying for, uh, for all of that for-profit care. Um, one of the important reforms in the Affordable Care Act was this transition from fee-for-service uh, payments to outcomes-based reimbursement. Uh, President Trump appointed someone to head HHS who was the chief opponent of transferring our payment system away from volume-based to value-based. I'd like to see us in a bipartisan way get back on the train to try to transition the way in which we pay for health care. Um, that could save us a lot of money in Medicaid as well. Um, but, you know, the reason that, um, you know, these proposals have been uh, so unpopular is is that um, it's not just about flexibility. It's about a dramatic cut in the number of people who have access to insurance. Now, we never got to see the CBO score on Graham Cassidy because it was rushed through uh, before we could get all the facts, but independent analyses suggested that it was gonna look like the previous bills. And in Connecticut, uh, we were gonna get more flexibility, but we were probably going to lose 40% of our federal health care dollars uh, coming into the state between the money we would lose in tax credits and the money we would lose in Medicaid. That is not flexibility that our state wants if we're going to get 40% less money to insure people resulting in a humanitarian catastrophe as hundreds of thousands of people lose care. Um, so again, I, I, I would hope that we would try to find the ground that both the Republicans and Democrats can agree on rather than going back to debate something like Graham Cassidy or the skinny repeal or the Paul Ryan uh, health care proposal that don't have any buy-in from a single Democrat in Congress. So may I respond? Just about everything Chris said is wrong. <laughs> and I say that particularly as pertains to those, legislati those legislative vehicles that I put forward. First with Susan Collins, Cassidy Collins, and then with uh, Graham Cassidy. Let's kind of work backwards. Connecticut wouldn't have lost 40%. It was only if you didn't read the CBO score, but you only read that which people said about the CBO score, which is taking small snippets without reading the whole thing. They said we cut Medicaid by a trillion dollars. Well, what we did is instead of funneling the money through Medicaid, we put it through a block grant. The state got as much money. They just didn't get it through Medicaid. They got it through the single block grant. It's just not true, Bill. Uh, I wrote the bill. <laughs> Believe me, I wrote the bill. <laughs> I wrote the bill. And so I can believe me, I wrote the bill. I know this. And so the, the fact we preserve the taxes. I read the bill. That doesn't make you more of an expert just because believe you're the me. person who wrote it. I, I would I would kind of disagree with that. I say that because we didn't cut the, the only funding we cut was the Medicaid, excuse me, was the individual mandate penalty and the employer mandate penalty. That was the only revenue that was cut, and maybe I think the medical device tax. And we actually, of course, would allow a state to reimpose those penalties should they wish. Connecticut didn't lose 40%. Connecticut lost a little bit because Connecticut is a very high cost state. There was about five states in the nation that lost money under Graham Cassidy, 19 states that substantially improved. Uh, but those five states are incredibly high cost, at which point it becomes a philosophical argument. Should the federal taxpayer be obligated to support a high cost state? By the way, Connecticut higher cost than Massachusetts are New York. So it wasn't just a regional thing. On the other hand, there are multiple things in the bills we put up that would lower cost. Uh, price transparency. I now have a bill with that, I think, with uh, Senator Bennett, with whom we're, we're putting that up. Price transparency. We also had um, uh, provisions that would allow combining of risk pools that would, of course, um, lower costs by increasing certainty. We also allowed a provision in which individuals got their HSA pre-funded with health savings accounts. Uh, and then HSAs have been shown to lower cost into themselves 
because the so-called activated patient becomes a more a wiser consumer of health care, more discerning. I can go down, but there are multiple provisions that would. But ultimately, I'll also say, just go back to this. We didn't cut funding, except in so far as that we did away with the penalties. And as regards the 32 million people that were uninsured from the outside source, that was Avalier, which was a total hit piece. They scored us over 11 years and 20. We only wrote the bill for 10. So of course, they said in the 11th year, everybody lost their coverage. Now, that was absurd, but that's what you get when you pay for a result. So